What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing uh, the series of getting the Lexus back to starting and uh, we are going to be taking care of something that I think has been very overdue and something that I have been you know prolonging um, at least on my end which is a drain fill for this car. The reason I've been prolonging it is because one I hate dealing with the transition um, and two I didn't want to just take it to just anybody. It doesn't seem that bad it pretty much just seems like an oil change just for the transmission but requires different steps and different things to do the drain and fill uh, so today we're going to be taking care of that if you guys have watched the previous lexus video i did do the spark plug change oil catch can install as well as the pcv valve install i haven't started the car ever since i installed it so this is going to be the first startup in like a month with all the new parts in cross my fingers everything works if it does start i'm going to take it on for a test drive just get the oil is warmed up um, and then we'll get started on doing the drain fill. if it starts cool if it catches on fire you guys will see cross my fingers everything works out the startup was a hell loud the startup was that's the loudest i've ever heard it um i'm just hearing a lot of hissing noise and i think it's coming from the oil catch can So it seems like there's air escaping from the oil catch can. Which what I'll do is I'll just drive it around the block first just to warm up the temp. Once I bring it back inside to do the transmission fluid, I think I'm just gonna uninstall the whole thing and just kind of see if I can figure out where the leak is coming from. So this is the first time that the car has been moved in like about a month. Putting it in gear and just reversing it out of the garage, the car does not sound happy. The hissing noise coming from the oil catch can does not sound good at all. So I don't think I'm gonna drive it too far. I'm probably just gonna drive it down the street, park for a little bit, and then kind of let the temps go up. It literally just sounds like there's air coming out of a tire that's like flat. So I'm honestly not gonna push it hard at all. I am happy to report that I'm alive. The car is not on fire, so the car made it back home. Um, just a few things that I wanted to kind of gather as on the test drive. One, um, the car runs good. You know, the car has run fine. The first order is the transmission. It doesn't upshift to weird like it did before. I think that's a good sign because when it would go from first to second, it would like hesitate and it wouldn't even shift properly from first to second. So that was just a big concern. But with that, I was able to get really high, not like super high, but higher in the RPM than normal daily driving. You know, that's fine. It's just when I go, when the car goes to downshift from, I don't know, from like third to second or from like second to first, um, that's when there's like a weird hesitation. Um, I'll put a clip on the screen so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. Other than that, the transmission, there's not really much that I've noticed from the last time that uh, I drove the car, so that's a good sign. So I jacked up the car and I took off some panels that were covering the transmission. So it's just this one big panel. It's held in by 10 millimeter screws. So I think there's one right here, there, 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 and then two right here. So just for reference, um, I am on the passenger side for the USD version. You will see this pan right here. This is where all of your transmission fluid is gonna be. So this right here, that is going to be the drain plug. So we're gonna be draining the fluid. We're gonna be filling from the fill hole, which is up here. And this little one right here, this plug right here, that's the overfill plug. So the difference between the transmission and the actual oil is there's no dipstick. So there's no real way of knowing how much fluid is actually in the transmission. Draining the overfill plug will let you know that the fluid is, you know, full and you have everything in there. Um, and then they will just drain the excess from right there. So I'm gonna see if I can explain this while you guys are there. Um, but just a reference, we are on the driver's side now. So this is it's a fucking spider. Oh, there's a spider. Anyway, before I was really interrupted by the spider, there's going to be a cover up here towards the driver's side of the transmission. You'll see two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here, one right here. Take this off and it will expose the fill hole for the transmission. And 
then this is going to expose where you will, we will be filling the transmission. Um, it's gonna be this 24 millimeter bolt right here. We're gonna remove that first before we even drain anything, like I said. So now we have the fun and exciting part of draining the fluid from the transmission. Uh, this bolt right here, the plug is gonna take a 14 millimeter. So let's go ahead, move that, take it off. As you can tell, the fluid draining out is really, really dark. So that means that um, it does need to be changed. Yeah, that is pretty filthy. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's, it's pretty. A few moments later. We have everything drained. I just wanted to show you guys how the transmission fluid looks like. So even like, I'm trying to shine the light, but you know, even with the light from the garage, um, it is still like, it's really, really dark. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna do this twice, like the whole transmission drain and flush um, twice. Not in the same day, but I'll probably like flush it out, drive it like a thousand miles and then change it again just so I kind of have like a full cycle of everything kind of out in terms of all the bad fluid. Um, Cause this is pretty bad. I think the new fluid that I got from Toyota is red. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drain that fluid and put it in here just so I can kind of get a good measurement of how much fluid is actually out. And then I can fill the car back up with however many fluid, however much fluid I drain up. So if you have, you know, I just have an old coolant bottle. If you have an old oil bottle, you guys can do that. Um, I just thought it'd be easier to drain it in there and then pour it in here. You can obviously just catch all of the fluid into just the bottle itself. Just to kind of prevent yourself from doing, you know, multiple steps, but fluid is moving a little bit and that's just kind of the stain, but a little bit less than two quarts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill the car with two quarts of transmission fluid. And then we'll see from there. It'll probably overflow and then it'll drain the rest out. But two quarts is what was in my car. Um, I'd suggest doing this method so you guys have an accurate reading of how much fluid you're gonna be adding instead of guessing. So now that we have all the transmission fluid out of this car, we now need to put new fluid in. So I ended up just buying the Toyota ATF WS transmission fluid. Uh, people recommend AMS oil, but since this is OEM and is my first time changing the fluid, I was like, I might as well just go OEM. So I went with this one. I'll put the link for this in Amazon um, for you guys if you guys wanna do this yourselves. I'll put the link in the description of the video. So if you guys wanna use this one, you guys are more than welcome to. The transmission is a little bit different than regular oil. You will need to use a siphon pump, a siphon transfer pump in order to get the fluid into the transmission. What we have here is just, you know, a simple transfer pump. You put this tube, the top tube from the top one into this fluid. You put this end into the transmission and that's about it. So, you know, there are automatic ones, but this one is pretty simple. Um, I'll put this, I got this off of Amazon as well. So I'll put both links for these two in the description down below. But now let's go ahead, pump the fluid in, pause. Let's get this finished. So we're gonna be using a two person method for this fill. So I have one end of the siphon in the transmission already. You'll see that the hose leads all the way to the tire, the front tire, and you'll see my brother holding the siphon pump. So I'm gonna have him actually pump the transmission, uh, Trump pump the fluid into the transmission so that it's a lot easier. Um, the tube is actually long enough so that it will reach. If you do have another person, cool. If not, you know, you just, yeah, no choice but to do it by yourself. A few moments later. So we're almost done with the whole transmission drain and fill. So now what we have to do is we have to now start the car, kind of let it get up to operating temperatures, kind of put it in gear, uh, park, drive, um, let it sit in like neutral, reverse, one, two, three, four, five, six for about three seconds. And then um, hopefully we'll be able to drain the rest of that from the overfill plug that one plug that we hadn't uh, taken off. Um, a lot of people recommend uh, the TechStream technology from Toyota or Lexus to be able to get the, uh, the car up to operating temperatures so you know when the fluid expands, um, that it's ready to be drained out. I unfortunately don't have that. If you have an OBD2 sensor that has that capabilities of scanning the temperature of the transmission, you can use that as well. But unfortunately I don't have any of those. So I'm just gonna use one of these like thermostat guns that kind of scans you for like temperature. Um, kind of ones that uh, restaurants use to scan your temperature. So I'm gonna use this. 
and I'm just gonna, you know, let it turn the car on, let it run for a little bit, uh, put it through gear, and then once it's up to operating temperatures, I believe it's anywhere between 35 to 50 degrees Celsius. Anywhere between there means that you're good to go to drain the transmission fluid uh, from the overfill plug. If you do it any hotter, it's going to, the fluid is going to expand and you're gonna be draining out more fluid than it's actually, than you're actually supposed to. So um, don't let it get too hot, but don't do it when it's too cold, kind of do it in the middle. So now we are back home um, and I can happily report to say that the transmission does feel a lot better um, This definitely feels like maybe a little bit better than how it felt like Before the issue started to happen if you guys enjoyed today's video and you guys found this video helpful Definitely give the video a big thumbs up and if you guys aren't already subscribe to the channel down below This car is not completely done yet I do have a couple of other things that I do need to do to the car to make it you know make it feel like new again So hopefully you guys will see more videos of that very very soon but until the next video, I'll see you guys in the next one.